Right now, there is a mom who's racing to find the answer to what's wrong with her child. Right now, there are parents who are trying to understand why their child is sick. And right now, there is someone being diagnosed with cancer, and their race to find answers has just begun. And I'm here to talk to you today about how the thousands of people who are helping these people run the race to find answers, how you can be one of them. So let's start with why this race is so personal for me. This is my dad. In May 2013, he was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer. So rare that there were only two research papers available on the types of chemotherapy treatment that would be effective for him. So we decided on a course of chemotherapy, and at the same time, his oncologist recommended that we do a test to find out if there were special characteristics of his tumor that had a targeted treatment. Six weeks into his chemotherapy, the results of that test came back, and he tested positive. His tumor tested positive for a specific trait. Now, you don't necessarily want to stop a course of chemo midway through and start a whole new one, so we decided to move forward with this chemo, and at the end of the 12 weeks, it was success. And what success looked like for him was that the tumor had not grown, and it had stayed the same. So his doctor told him, you know, take a break, recover, go on vacation, and let's continue to monitor the situation. Well, about a month later, his health deteriorated rather quickly, and he passed away in December of 2013. And I share this story with you because cancer is one of the toughest challenges we face today. And I guarantee you, had we found that answer six weeks earlier, that we would have made different choices. And maybe the outcome would have been different. So let me share with you two other of the world's toughest challenges that we face today and how I think why I think there's hope and how you can join in that hope. Inherited disease. Inherited disease is something that a parent passes on to a child that um, is, the parent is either a carrier for or has that disease. So it's anything from Tay-Sachs disease to sickle cell anemia to cystic fibrosis. And now, right now, the largest cause of infant mortality is inherited disease. Infectious disease. This is when a foreign agent enters your body, it's a virus or it's a bacteria. It's anything from tuberculosis to HIV AIDS to Ebola to the Zika virus. The World Health Organization ranks infectious disease as still in the top 20 leading causes of death today. And I already talked to you a little bit about cancer, but today more than 4,700 people will be diagnosed with cancer. And since we declared the war on cancer more than 40 years ago, we have barely made a dent in the mortality rate. And so now that I've painted this really grim picture for you of what the world looks like, let me tell you why there's hope. And that hope is called genomics. Genomics is simply the science of studying the genome, the mapping of the genome, the evolution, the structure of a genome. So what's a genome? The genome is essentially the complete set of genetic material in a cell or a single organism, right? In humans, your genome is packaged up into 23 pairs of chromosomes. You get one set from mom, you get one set from dad. And in the chromosome are DNA strands all smushed together, and that is the code for life. So think of it this way. Your genome is the library, your chromosome are books, and within the books are letters, and that's your DNA. That is the story of you. So let's talk about how much information there is in your genome and why it's important to understand that. There are six billion letters of code in your genome. Six billion. So if you were to sit down and type out all the letters in a genome for eight hours a day, it would take you about 50 years. I don't know about you, but that's not a job I would want. But why is it so important to understand all of this information? Well, think of it this way. Your genome is the software program of life. And just like software code, which is simply zeros and ones in a very specific order, your genome is the same. It's a series of A's, T's, C's, and G's in a very specific order. And that order determines what makes you uniquely you. 
It determines your eye color, your hair color, your height, and your propensity for disease. So let me share with you a couple of stories about hope and how genomics is going to change the future. And as I share these stories with you, I would love for you to think about the careers and the people that had to have participated in these success stories along the way. So this is the story of Danielle, Mason, and Noah. Danielle was 24, she lives in the UK, and breast cancer ran in her family. Five of her immediate family members suffered from breast cancer. And she had what's called the BRCA1 mutation. It's a mutation in that gene, and it increases your risk for breast cancer by 90%. So she knew at a very young age that she was going to have to go through a mastectomy and eventually a hysterectomy, and she wanted to have kids. And she didn't want to pass this on to her children. So what she did is she went through the in vitro fertilization process, but she did a test called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. And that is a mouthful, I get it, so we're just gonna call it PGD. And so this test looked for that mutation in her embryos, and it turns out that four of the viable embryos, three out of the four had that mutation. So she was able to take one healthy embryo, and as a result, she had a happy, healthy baby named Noah, who's free of that mutation. So she didn't have to pass that along to her child. Now, along the way, she met with a genetic counselor who recommended that test to her. So what's a genetic counselor? A genetic counselor is simply someone who studies genetic information and works like, with people like you and me to understand what is that genetic information, how can we use that to manage our health. It is one of the jobs that is in high demand. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics estimates that this job will increase, the demand for this job will increase by over 30% in the next five to 10 years. Talk about job security. This next story is about Joshua. This is one of my favorite stories. Joshua was a 14-year-old boy, lives in Wisconsin with his family, went on vacation, came back, and he was sick. So he had fevers and headaches, and over the course of three months, started to get worse, and his symptoms escalated, all the way to the point where he was having epileptic seizures and swelling in the brain. And his doctors had to put him in a medically-induced coma. And throughout the three months, they had done the battery of tests on him and still could not figure out what was going on. So as a last resort, his doctor recommended to his parents, let's send off a sample of his spinal fluid to this lab at the University of California in San Francisco, and let's see if this test brings back anything. And so what the University of California in San Francisco lab had was a machine that looked at all of the DNA fragments in his spinal fluid, filtered out the human DNA, and looked for pathogens, foreign, foreign entities inside the, DNA, inside the spinal fluid to see what could be causing Joshua's symptoms. 48 hours later, they came back with a result. And that result was that he had trace amounts of leptospira in his spinal fluid. So what is that? It causes leptospirosis, it's a bacteria. It causes you to have all the symptoms that Joshua had. But how do you treat a bacterial infection? Antibiotics, right? So the doctors put him on a seven-day course of intravenous penicillin, and seven days later, he was walking, and 30 days later, he was out of the hospital, symptom-free. So Joshua is literally in this race to find answers, and this technology enabled that. So let's think about you know, what it took to go from a sample of his spinal fluid all the way out to a result. Remember I was telling you about all that information that's in a genome? Well, there's a career called bioinformatician, and what that is is the marriage of biology and software. And so what these people do is they take biological data and they turn it into meaningful information that people can use to make decisions about their health and how they take care of themselves. And just like genetic counselors, it is one of the most high demand jobs right now. We cannot fill the jobs that we have for these people. And so my last story is about Marin and Owen. And Marin is actually a San Diego woman. She was pregnant with her second child at the time. And she went in for what is called a non-invasive prenatal test. And because she was over the age of 35, this test was required. 
and the test came back abnormal. And after further testing, what the doctors found out is that Marin was, Marin's baby was perfectly fine. The baby was healthy and everything was fine, but that Marin had cancer. And so what this test did, it was a simple blood draw, but what it did is it looked for fragments of the baby's DNA in the mom's blood. And in the process, it picked up cancer DNA floating around in her blood. And now, Marin didn't have any symptoms of cancer. She had no idea she had cancer, but suddenly she's plunged into this race to figure out what is she gonna do for her and her baby. So she ends up delivering her baby, baby Owen, at 32 weeks. He spends a month in the NICU and is a healthy, happy baby. And she starts her chemo treatment as soon as possible. These are just a few of the ways that genomics is going to change our future and how it's gonna help us. There are so many other applications of genomics out there. Everything from agriculture and understanding what kinds of crops are going to grow in arid temperatures so that people can eat, all the way through forensics and helping the criminal justice system find answers sooner. And so this is where my ask of you comes in. So whether you're a student who's interested in science or technology or engineering or math, keep being curious and ask questions. And whether you're a parent who has a child who has an interest in any of these areas, encourage them to be curious. Encourage them to think of the possibilities because their possibilities are our, our reality tomorrow. Or whether you're a teacher who has 20 to 30 kids in your classroom every single day, ignite their curiosity. Ask them questions about why they wanna help people, what they wanna do. Because it's only when we all work together in this race Will we solve the world's toughest challenges? So what do you guys say? Are you in?